Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome to the first ever Obey podcast. I'm here with me, myself, Jonathan, Random, Hi. and the Obey House Florida. We're going to be kicking it off with, I guess, a really good question to start off with, which is, did we ever think we would all be here together? I mean, we've all had this super long journey, I guess, get some context about where you guys started, where we're at now, and, and how that process was. Yeah, so, um, well, I think we have the longest lasting member and the shortest one day <laughs> one day that's just incredible and i think i was in for a year maybe i yeah, was never like in obey yeah ever <laughs> never joined that's obey so that's so. crazy you're in every other team though yeah I, I was actually in like every you were other in team. a lot dude i, I was I, in like i've two. been places <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you just skipped all the ladders. You're like, obey, red, done. I'm done. Dude, yeah. you had to actually you remember had... when Random joined Obey. Like, it was the craziest thing. It's yeah. just one night. Every single night. I happened. literally think every person in, like, every community hit me up. Dude, Everybody You had did. the craziest, like, opening run ever. Like, it was insane. This man had less than 100 subscribers and climbed to the top of the social ladder. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, yeah, I, I, at that, I think in that day, I was the highest grossing youtube channel i th in that day at that time now it's like wow now it's like impossible to do that but, but to uh go back and answer your question um you know i've been in obey for three years when i first was a part of it and you know to say that we were to come back i honestly never expected that to happen uh, you know a couple months back things were kind of different for us because we thought we had it all you know we had our own group going on at our own different house and um, thou shall not be know, named things kind of just <clears throat> took a course for the worst and um you know Luckily, we were approached by Julian and Jaw, and uh, they wanted to unite and work on something together in Obey. And we saw this as a great opportunity to join forces and create something a lot bigger. So, you know, we're really happy to be here right now and recording these podcasts and being in this house and hanging out and having a great time. Something we've wanted to do and yeah, tried dude, to do. We've, we've, and we've been trying to do content like this for years and stuff like that, but it, we just never had the equipment and the funding for it. But now... You know, it just seemed like people didn't care. They didn't want it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we wanted it so bad. Like we like we know we tried like, but it just couldn't happen. We didn't have the resources. We didn't have the support. Like it just didn't happen. Like it just wasn't as important. But being in Obey, like we have the resor resources to do like whatever we want. And that, I think that is the coolest thing. Like I've never had so much support from like an org or a team before. Like I feel like these people like just that aren't in obey that kind of look at it obey maybe are in like some smaller teams and stuff don't really understand what obey is maybe they look at obey as like maybe it's still this like trick shotting team or whatever but it's turning into something completely different and i think people are going to start seeing that soon i think it's about to start getting pretty crazy so numbers big, big numbers. things big numbers. i think what separates obey from a lot of these other organizations is that you know a lot of organizations choose either one or the other path it's either esports driven or content driven and something that we've wanted in the past was to have the best of both worlds. And unfortunately, we could just never ha could have gotten that. But I feel like Obey matches the vision that we wanted with our previous team. And we feel like this is just the perfect option, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I think it's, it's really interesting because if you would have asked me and Jonathan like a few months ago, there's no way me and him would have said we would be having two houses with you guys part of Obey. It's just lately life doesn't feel real for that reason yeah, like it just yeah, feels oh like God, it yeah. just all Believe came me, together so weird. we all feel the yeah. same way <laughs> and it's like I, I i have to do give a shout out to infinite who's made all this possible for us those people are amazing people who really believed in our vision not only myself jonathan's but this collective vision which is why i believe this came together so well you know it's not just me and jonathan at the helm anymore obviously we lead the brand and everything we do but there's so many people behind us that truly believe in like there's not a day we go that goes by that we're not thankful for that so and i mean we've wanted that forever <laughs> for so I, long. I think like two years ago i can remember just like me and jillian just coming together with obey in like 2015 and just thinking like is this ever going to be like the thing that we want it to be like looking at all these other top tier brands, like it was just like so stressful through it. going in like 2016 when we first started esports. 2017 was a really rough year for us, like figuring out if we were ever gonna make that like peak and break in like esports and not even esports, just content in general. And like, I don't know, man, we've been on a long ride. I know you guys have been on a long ride as well. And it's just like, it's amazing to think that like, we're finally here together, joining forces and like being like one of the top tier content and esports brands like in the game right now. It's like, it's insane. Yeah, I guess the craziest thing for us is that, like, you, this man literally found me 
when I had like 500 subscribers, he pulled me up from the dirt and he, you know, let, gave me an opportunity to become something in this community. And I started off with the trick shot community, obviously grew like exponentially. And the funny thing is he actually, um, there was a bunch of drama going on with synergy and obey. And I think you joined obey for like two days and then you left to go back to synergy. Something like that. <laughs> Wait, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. you want to say? Give him the mic. Give him the mic. Yeah. Right, here we go. I'm, yeah. I'm putting my head down. Yeah. Me and Alex had a great experience oh, with that yeah. one. Yep. I remember it's because like me and Alex got him calls. Like Alex, because I think Formula, you kind of cared about Obey at that point. I did. Like you cared, but you were so focused on Red. Even when I wasn't a yeah. part of Obey, I still yeah. cared a lot about and it. And I was like, look, I, I really want to get John to join Obey. Like he seems pretty open to it. So we had this super long call with him, like convinced him in everything. Like, All right, we're going to do this. And then we announce it. Yeah, I got a phone call. Yeah, we announce it. We announce it. And then me and Foreman on the call, like so high. We're like, man, this is bringing some attention back to obey. It feels good. John leaves the call. Not a word. Doesn't respond to any of our messages. Then tweets out JK, like he psyched us. Whoa, and I, I blocked this yeah, man. I blocked him so I bad. blocked him. I, I was so disappointed. So I, think, I think I remember that. I felt oh, so man. betrayed, bro. Like, I genuinely hated him. Like, yeah. bad. So how did you guys get back into the same yeah. Well, well hold up, right, hold up. Cool. The yeah. funny thing is, from that from that story, I was... Jaw brought me up to this team called the Gods. So I was just chilling in the Gods. When he joined Obey, I was like, it's over. I don't have a chance to get into Synergy anymore. It's done. And then you go back to Synergy. I'm like, yes, let's go, dude. I got my opportunity. He brings me into Synergy, and then halfway into Synergy, I'm like, man, I really I really want to get into this Team Red. They're doing cool stuff. They got the biggest fan base. How can I do that? And I hit up one of my good friends, Sean. You guys probably know Sean. And um, he was like, yeah, just join Obey, man, and go from there. And so I hit up you, Julian, and this is when I backstabbed Jaw to join Obey. And that was like the first time I joined Obey. And... Yeah, backstab the man that you know helped you out. Dude, you know, back, I know it. Back, it when, you, so back when I had a Skype call with you and like you were hyperventilating when I was like, "Hey, man, can I see your, can I see your app clips? Can I see your stuff?" All the team stuff. There, there's so much politics behind yeah. it that people probably don't even understand. But that, that's just how like it is. It's I, all mind games and mani manipulation. That's how it used to be, at least. Remember when day. you left Obey? Yeah. For when yeah, I got you to yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> that's just the way the community was yo, it was who can yo, manipulate more in the cock community this I've is never so abandoned my family yo, never since we're talking about all this team shit with politics and stuff like when red first came out i remember i was so upset that i was not invited to this team like i was actually so pissed like there was all these big names like and i was just like i was just like dude like, why am I not a part of this team? And you felt the same way. Yeah. I know you did. Yeah, because Ferris so, got in and I didn't get right. in. Right, and, and me and you, we had, like, literally never talked before. And we got into a Skype call and we were like, you know what, dude? Screw this, dude. <laughs> let's join forces. Let's, <laughs> let's take Obey and bring it to Soar. Let's, let's make it the greatest team. And it took a lot of convincing, but I got formula to leave Obey for like three hours. And then, dude, Twitter was a mess. I remember you're like, dude, I got to go take a walk. Like, you went. <laughs> you <laughs> gotta go take a walk. Dude, you went. Yo, let me you, just put down the mic. Dude, just, you went and took a walk somewhere, and I was like, oh, dude, this then, is a mess. And, and, then, then, and then the most famous moment in Twitter history, FaZe Blaziken <laughs> tweeted at me. You just abandoned my family. Dude, Dang. I couldn't believe it. Dude, that was crazy. So there's a lot of politics behind the teams yes. and stuff that people just don't know. Well, this is also this is kind of cool because like you guys were all in teams and everything. And like from from my point of view, like I was a fan of like all you yeah. guys basically. So you don't like, know what's going on. I, you just I, see well, chaos. Yeah, because I was I remember like all this happening. And I was really confused. Like I, I didn't really know who you guys were. I just knew you were more like leads. Like I didn't know your personality or anything like that. It was more like that. But just like seeing all that stuff was just like. I don't know what's going on, and I'm just, like, super confused of everything that is happening right now. So, we got to know, who brought you back to Obey? What happened there? Like, I, I don't even think I've heard that story. Like, did Scaris hit you up? Like, you got to go back, or what was it? Was, it? it was Agony. It was, it was Agony? Agony? Uh, no, Agony yeah. and Scaris put me in a call. And Blaziken. Like, Wasn't Blaziken Yeah, there? and Blaziken, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. They were like, if you don't join back now, like, you'll never have a chance to, like, go any higher or do oh, whatever. Dang. Like, it was, like, a serious moment. Like, it was just... It was it was blasphemy. <laughs> like, how yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, dude. It was, there was just so much pressure and like I don't know. It was just wild. Well, you had the same experience with kind of with banks, didn't you? Yeah, I, I had this crazy experience with banks, and it's basically how I joined Red. But with you, didn't you end up just joining 
obey back and then because scarce was like yo if you join obey back i'll get you in red. yeah right yeah. that's what yeah. it was i had a similar thing with um so so i was still in soar it was i think it was me general and wiz player or something we were leading soar at the time and i wanted to join red so bad i didn't want to be in soar anymore i i just felt like red was the place to be so i tried my hardest and i i felt like i wasn't ever going to join so i started convincing red players to join back soar and it was this constant war between players going here and there and banks was pissed mac ended up leaving red to go to soar mac was actually in red this is just an insane story basically i just swooped de whooped my way into red <laughs> i'm not gonna lie and i didn't even mean to do that it just kind of happened because banks ended up um freaking out on twitter and he ended up calling me in general and he was like listen dude i know you want to join phase all right and you will never, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to answer this question. And d- depending on it is if you ever get a chance to join phase ever again, you either join red right now, or you never join phase. You get 10 seconds. To answer this question. I remember that. And I'm, and I'm sitting here like, w- what? Like <laughs> in general had already joined red at that point. He wasn't in sore anymore. So I felt like, okay, if general's in red, I have, I feel like I have no choice. Like I, I will never join phase. And then I just ended up joining red from there and then mac like hated me because he just left red to go back to soar yeah. and it was just it was a mess dude it was it was gross politics the, dude, yeah. the whole, politics. that was politics. such a mess politics. dude that's such a people mess, don't man. see it really dude but people don't know people don't know but behind the scenes everyone's yeah. in discord actually skype skype was the thing. Yeah. skype was the thing everybody no was in skype calls hopping in and out trying to manipulate join this team this team gets more views that team sucks like it was yeah. and mess. the thing that's nice about now is i'm we're not even a part of that anymore yeah. so, that was just some back history different. for everybody that, that, that's just our backstory back then back then it was like child's play right yeah, yeah. Right. It, it, was, it was like you're playing chess it yeah. was like a yeah. game like but yeah, but now it's so much different like there's there's actual org and like real business it behind used to be who can finesse their way that's who can top. manipulate yeah. the hardest yeah. it really was yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and there is still people playing that game today like it's, and it works still on some i yeah. mean it is what it is but you know we're out of that shit we don't do that anymore so nope 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 but you know what i actually do find pretty interesting i think when i did leave obey like to to fully commit to red um you know i wanted to leave obey in good hands and I, I think Magoo yeah. at the t- you and Magoo were in a team saw right yeah yeah and you know I, for some reason I I could never find anybody to take over that role and I just something told me that uh, Magoo and Aeolus just had a good heart and yeah. uh, they should have it's fulfilled crazy. that role that decision yeah, changed that's your nuts. entire life yeah that's crazy it all went full circle yeah, yeah it, that's it, nice. it came back around in in a good way too like it's it's really cool Life shout out to Marcus simulation. by the way yeah. <laughs> That's nuts. That's yeah, crazy. I miss that man. Yeah. I miss nah, it was a it was a crazy story. I think I've always like wanted to be part of Obey. Even him, like when we were running Psycho together, like we used to be like Dude, that's insane. The minute, Psycho. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. insane. I actually wow. think we did a good job. Like yeah. for a while Psycho wasn't bad that at was Ghost. 2013. Yeah. Oh wow. Dude, oh Early my god. On. So far. Now I remember like when you hit him up and like you wanted to run that team together, be like, bro, you're gonna get an Obey. Like that's insane. Yeah. You know, that like, for us Obey was always like the dream team Mm -hmm. so it was always like that chasing moment i guess that was back when like dare was like super like on par with obey at some points and soar was like you guys are in back and forth with it but yeah and then i we all went our separate ways i think you were in synergy when i joined obey and it was already where magoo was already in obey with Bigos and they got me in a call. Oh Bro, my yeah, God! Yeah. Yeah. God, yes. Yeah. Now that you say yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. wow, this is really a throwback. Is yeah. he? He's he's the one that faked clips on AW, didn't he? I'm not sure. No, what I think he did. Oh, was I thinking uh, of somebody else? Yeah, no, he was only a leader. A lot of he didn't. That he just clips, ran teams and stuff. But pretty sure that was you. Oh yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's actually I got I got called out from that from, from actually, the RC. Yeah, right? there were a couple of the phase guys. Really? Yeah, that's, I I don't remember who it was, but it was three phase guys came in and they talked to me and they were like, "We think this one clip is fake." And I was like, "You think this one clip is fake? <laughs> but my other twenty nine minutes aren't like you're gonna go off of this right, one, right, 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 whatever." But, you know, you know what's funny? Hmm. I literally remember when it was like 2013. We would literally have like, cause remember you were in college, you were trying to be a doctor, and we'd no have these way. long phone calls, like talking about like, oh, bro, I want to be a doctor. I want to change the world. I have all yeah, these like dude, goals. I was, I was so like. And literally, like, I remember we were leading like some small teams together, and like, do you think we could ever do like esports? Like, how, how does that even was pro- before esports the thing? It was more like no, we knew about like Call of Duty esports though. Like, yeah. we we knew like Call of Duty esports was like big, but like. We were just like wondering how do we get into that? How do yeah. we get to like that level? And like, 
I remember having like hours and hours and hours yeah. of calls with you. Like, are we ever going to be at that top tier? And like, now look like it's just like crazy to think that like we're sitting here with people that we've known for like years and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah. It's just like, it's still mind blowing. Like talking about this right now in this podcast, I'm like still thinking like, dang. One of the craziest things to me is like, especially after like I left red is like how fast, like all of this has happened. Like so quickly. Months. Like, Cause two, I, I really away. thought like I was probably going to be solo for years. I thought that, I honestly thought eventually you guys would probably leave yeah. Red yeah. too. Yeah. At just the way that everything was happening. But like even when I thought that you guys weren't gonna leave, I was like, I don't know what we're gonna do. Like it's literally we're all just gonna be kinda like solos and just kinda yeah. riding each other's Dude, like, it was just and stuff. None of us knew what was going on, but we knew we just had to it was time for something new. Like no matter yeah. what happened, like everything even was falling if it was apart. Our own. Like I it, for I feel like for at least us three, we felt like everything was crumbling. I don't know about you because you you know you had your house, you had you know your family to go back to, but I know me and Form especially, we felt like things were crumbling. Our channels were doing awful. Like we've been grinding Fortnite for months and nothing was going right, yeah. and it was probably one of the lowest times I've had I, in that house. I, I didn't I text you like a couple yeah. of days ago yeah, or you something. Did. Yeah. I I like. Cause now you're about to hit like 10 mil in a month or yeah. whatever, <laughs> and, which is just stupid, dude. Yeah, that's so that's sick. crazy. But bro. it's just like, it, it was like on top of that. Cause I remember I, I've gone through like so many boats where I, there's probably been like four or five times where I've thought, man, I might have to quit what I'm doing right Same. now. Like oh, I, yeah. I might have like a little bit of money in the bank, but it's only for so long to where I have to move on and I have to like, I'll have to go to school or yep. I have to go get a job somewhere. Yeah. And just like knowing that like because I, re I remember you were kind of in a hole but you like i didn't really know of just because like things were still going on but i mean it's just crazy to see like yeah where we are now and everything and i i even told you i was like it's it's nuts where you were and like yeah. where you are now and yeah. like just take a hold of the moment it's literally the mentality it's you you fight yourself every single day oh if my you God. can so conquer much, yeah. your own it's literally about conquering yourself in life that's what it I is mean, man I think that's like why we're all here is like we made the groundbreaking decisions and oh, sacrifices. Yeah. 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 So many sacrifices. We, we actually talk about this all the yeah. time. We literally think like life is a test or this whole thing is a test. Like we've, we've been through so much shit. Like we've, we've seen so many different things. We've seen people come and go. We've seen people make it or break it. Like we, we've just seen it all. Like we feel like we've been through so much to, and we're still here. That's why we're at where right. we're at. I'm you not, know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not going to lie, like when all this unfolded for the first time in May, like I felt so defeated because my role was a little bit different from these guys where I actually had like a, a management position within the team. And I, you know, I, I held a lot of responsibility with decision making and to see it all unfold and just crumble down. Like it, it just made me feel like I f failed all my friends and I, I felt completely just crushed. And, you know, two months later, things just turn around completely a full 180 you know our channel started doing a lot better we're a lot happier we're traveling more we're going out more we're doing a lot more fun things we got a new house we just c complete new lifestyle like in two months and it's just crazy how fast you can turn things around for yourself if you just stay focused do what you love and just have a good heart really. i mean i mean it's the same for me and jillian too like literally like almost about four months ago we were yeah. both in our parents house and like we were like contemplating like is this going to be our careers or do we need to find something else to do? And like, I mean, I just want to give a quick shout out to my mom. I know you're going to be watching this. I love you. Thank you. For <laughs> me. Shout, out to in your house. shout out to the mom. Yo, mom, I love you. I know you're watching there. this and like, yeah. thank you so much because like literally I was in my house and I, I just remember being in my room stuck for hours, like thinking like, what am I going to do with my life? Like I'm yeah. 21 now. And it's just like, bro, we used to sit in Skype calls thinking, talking like, about like, yeah. yo, like, I remember talking to you about like, bro. I think I'm gonna be a welder. It was yeah. like, 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 <laughs> I don't yeah, know like, like, what's going on, bro. Like, bro, I need to do something with my. Bro, life, I was like but. 19, sitting in my room making trick shot videos. My mom's like, "What are you doing, you weirdo?" You know, like it was hard. Yeah, yeah I but. think I don't know. Coming back to that, it's just it's all about making the harder choices. Like nobody's afraid to risk it. Like I know for me, like I left college. I did. Too. I left my yeah. dream college. Yeah. So for me, it was like a big decision. And even for me, like people used to ask me like, what would happen? And personally, like I would say like, what's your, people would tell me like, what's your backup plan if this doesn't work out? And I would say like, there is no backup yeah. plan. Yeah. Because yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I had that pushed. What, if you have a backup yeah. plan, that means you, no, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Had, you, you, if you have a backup plan, you are already saying you, you already you're failed. not going to make it. Yeah. You're, you're like, I'm expecting to fail. Here's a backup plan. Like, yeah. yeah. And I had pushed 
like we had both make significant sacrifices to the point where it's like you pushed yourself past the point of having a backup plan. Yeah. Like you have to do it. Yeah. Exactly. You, there's yeah. no other choice. And I think that's, that's why I made it to where I'm at. I'm like, dude, this is, I gotta do Completely this. Completely. Yeah. Like, I, I, I cut off parties. I cut off friends. I cut off yep. girlfriends, like nothing. Like I had nothing at one point, nothing in my room, 12 hours a day. All I did was work. I literally wake up, work, go to sleep, keep doing it every single day for like a year. Literally. Straight. We did not socialize with anybody for yeah. two years the only people no. we knew for the first two years we moved to the red house and even still now yeah the only people we know just is the people that we live with we keep to ourselves and the the thing to and take away from this if you guys are out there and you actually want to make this don't worry about what other people are doing you focus on yourself you everybody else it doesn't matter and let's say your friends you know you take care of your friends your family but everyone else whatever they're doing don't worry about it it's all about you you just focus on yourself man if it you want it bad enough, you'll you know? you'll get it. If yeah, you want you it bad enough, yeah. you will. No matter what. I think that's like the funniest question to ask somebody is like, how bad do you want it? Yeah. And it, in reality, like most people don't know how to answer that because they'll say, oh, I want it. But mm -hmm. it, there's always a but. What are you willing to do there, for it? There's always, yeah. I want it very bad, but it's so hard. But, but it's, I got it's, work. It's like, but I got you yeah, know if you want it they thing. like the yeah. idea I, of yeah. you know having it and stuff but they don't want to put in the work they don't want to have to grind for two years constantly not talking to anybody literally not socializing not grinding money, on your computer like they want like, to. yeah literally like, like i remember just the other night we were having a conversation like me and kiwi he taught me how to use photoshop and learn to make thumbnails we stayed up till five in the morning just so i can learn how to make a decent thumbnail and this man taught me like it it's crazy like you really got to put in hours like yeah. you can't dude, sleep dude like before we came here like it's just a perfect example like before we came here and we went to fly here like none of us slept because we knew we had to make videos you know what i mean like we treat this shit like it's so important like it's a job you know what i mean like we genuinely want this like we love making videos we love putting in the work we like seeing the results there's people that like the results they like seeing, you know, the numbers and stuff, but they don't want to put in the work. They don't, you know, they like the idea of being able to sit at home all day and make videos and, but they don't make videos you know, exactly. or, you know, whatever. People just don't put in the work. You know what I mean? And I think that separates us from a lot of different people. I and think that's, this is definitely something that like a major, like probably 95% of people don't get is how much time like. Oh yeah, we put into like YouTube and everything. Dude, it, it's, it's not like a nine to five no. like Monday through Friday. It is literally like all Your day entire long. Life. You eat, sleep, and Monday through YouTube. Sunday, mm -hmm. every single day. You're con I'm even if I'm like out with my family or something like that. Yeah, I'm constantly thinking about videos. Like, yeah. what's the next video that can like right. pop me off more? Like, do better. People don't understand. Is. This is the hardest job I've had, and I've worked. Oh, I've worked at gas same. stations. I've yeah. worked at restaurants. I've had four of the jobs. Mentally, hardest job I've ever mentally. Had this is the craziest thing I've ever done because like literally new ideas all the, every day. If you're a daily uploader, new ideas, you got to come up with new stuff. You got to be creative. You got to keep people engaged. Like, differently. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. There's a lot and of YouTubers that have like editors too. And we edit, we edit make ourselves, our own thumbnails, make our own thumbnails, record our own videos. And it's, all, it's also not just putting in the work. It's also learning. You have to learn how to, yeah. you know, do oh, Photoshop, yeah, learn how yeah. to edit more, learn how to, yeah. you know, do your tags, your description, all, all that stuff. Your I titles. Think, like, I think the groundbreaking moment for me, at least I understand like your guys story, but like with Jillian was like I remember when he called me he said I think I'm dropping out of college bro and I was That's like what crazy, I, was like, wait, I was like wait what he's like bro obey full time let's do it are you down and I was like I was working what I don't even know what job I was working I was working some garbage oh, man, nine to five I was working some garbage Dude. nine to five bro and I was yeah. like I don't know bro I was like I had to talk to my mom I was like mom if I quit my job and like try to focus with this like you know gaming team and stuff like that. I want to be like a YouTuber. I want to have like an esports organization. I want to have my own business with my friend. I was like, do you think you'll support me to do it? She's like, a year. That, that's exactly what my mom said. Yeah, exactly Dude, what my I mom think said, that's yeah. what we all did. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I literally, like, I lied to my parents about going to college. Like, I, I, I told them, like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go. And they wanted me to enroll in this community college. I didn't want to do it. Like, I literally hated the idea of going to school. All I wanted to do was make videos and entertain people. That's literally all I wanted to do. And, like, I knew that. My parents, they were like, okay, when are you going to enroll in this community college? Like, when are you going to do this? I, I lied to them. I told them I enrolled and that I'm going to be going in. And then it's time to go to school. I never go. And then it's like months later, my dad texts me and he's like, listen, son, what's going on? Like, you're, you're down in the basement. You're not socializing. What's going on? Well, like, how are you going to make this work? And I'm like, listen, give me a year. And if this doesn't work out in this full year, then fine i'll go to school but right now this is what i'm doing and he was like okay son 
like literally three, four months later, I end up moving into the red house. Yeah. And so literally crazy. life yeah. changes yeah. completely. Yeah. Yeah. And people, yeah. there's people out there that are scared to make that sacrifice that really want to do it, but they just, they don't do it. And then they end up regretting it years later. Every single time I've like put a huge risk in my life, it's turned out to be the best. Like I, I will, I agree. it will eat me alive, but it'll end up being like the best thing. Mm-hmm. And I I'd recommend that for like anybody, like it's, be it's, smart about it. But yeah. at the same time, like if you want it that bad, you have to make that sacrifice it honestly goes back to what i said before it's like you're fighting yourself the fear in your head like you're thinking of all the possibilities what's going to happen but when you jump that's that's when it changes that's when it all changes that's that's when reality hits and you get to see what happens so and i think people are too afraid to jump that's a, you know you just got to take the risk so. that that too but if you are going to jump and take the risk at least kind of like prepare beforehand don't just you know not not go to school and then choose to do youtube without knowing what you're doing you know what i mean at least take some time to learn about it before like for for me example when i was in college i went to school for two years and at the same time i was in school i was still doing the youtube stuff like i i would come back from class at three o'clock and then right after that i would upload to red and then upload to phase clan i with scarce we used to work two channels on the same day and then i would go to bed at 4 a.m it got to the point where i started to miss exams and i just failed classes because of that and eventually got to the point where okay well this college thing isn't working out i gotta choose one or the other youtube is the route for me that's when the red house you, is born i, I feel so. i feel like you kind of got to do it safely i, I don't, i'm not saying just like completely quit everything but it's mm-hmm. like it's like because i remember i was working for Domino's, right and i was like i would work an eight nine hour shift and then i would come back home and i would grind and i'd do that for like six hours and like i'm just not gonna sit at home just doing nothing for like 12 hours and just like uploading because I don't have any money I've got to do something at that time I was living by myself so I was like I have to make money but I eventually got to the point that oh well now I can kind of take like a few shifts off now I can do less uh now I can just quit my job because I'm making enough money to where I can actually quit now so I you I I do agree you have to do it safe but you do have to take risks you obviously need to support yourself I mean you need a job like you need you know you can't just sit and not make money you know what I mean you need to have some sort of backbone i guess you'll but you'll know when the time is right, right. yeah you'll exactly. feel it Definitely. you'll feel yeah, when you're ready to take heart. that leap yeah you know you'll take that leap when you'll know you're ready yeah because for me like i had been contemplating leaving college for a while and by no means am i trying to say like you need to leave college to right. do this right i like a lot of people are able to balance both but i yep. think it's a very personal thing like can you do it yeah and for me like i had been feeling that way for a while but i just hit my point where one day i walked out of class and i said you know what i can't do this anymore yeah. right yeah. like i can't Same. physically and mentally push myself to go through this it's not worth it and i want to lay it all on the line and i think like some people they don't have to come to that they can very well oh, go yeah. to college and yeah. do some people love school. going to college yeah. and doing that thing you know what and, I mean? like, and and i think that's what makes everything unique in life is everybody's path and you learn from it because you can learn from people that are extremely organized in life like can do college and school i mean college and youtube and everything but like i said everybody's unique and sometimes you just have to make the best decision for you and what i'll say is nobody knows what's best other than yourself right yeah you and, know and i'm i'm glad you said that because yeah. you know a lot of people like even by, by the way we're talking i feel like we're giving college like a negative outlook yeah. when it's really not like that at all yeah. like some people it's okay like if you want to be a lawyer doctor something where you actually need to go to school and get certified for that that's completely understandable not everybody wants to be a youtuber an actor which is fine right yeah, yeah. so no, that's true definitely but i just want to go back to julian for a second i know i've talked to these guys about it but um you know when i dropped out of college myself um my mom was so mad at me she was livid and i know you said you're going for a doctorate so i can't even imagine how your parents were feeling about that oh so i mean yeah i, I can answer so i have an interesting co- story about college actually so i was going to be a doctor and i had been pre-med and i ended up dropping out well withdrawing from college because stem pre-med is probably the most stressful course load you'll ever yeah, go my, through my sister's about to go um, crazy. and to the point where it pushed me to like have anxiety and i was like look i need to step back and that's actually when I joined Obey. Um, and I was doing Obey, but Obey was just, you know, trick shotting. We were just chilling, making videos. It was less, it was casual, you know, right. I was just doing my thing. Uh, so I got into NYU, which was a big step for my life uh, for business leadership. And I actually took business leadership and got into NYU because of Obey. That's crazy. And so, you know, I was taking my classes and my mom had already known, like I had let her know and 
she is extremely supportive. I already let her know, like, look, it's been very stressful on me. Like, I don't know if I could continue to do this. Um, and I, you know, I just called her and I, honestly, like I broke down there. I was like, look, I just can't do it anymore. I, I gotta go. I actually don't yeah. think a lot of people know that your mom and the, your stepdad actually live out here. Like they took yeah. another risk. To move yeah. Out yeah. Out yeah. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. That's so yeah. Sick. There we've had. It's all good, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> we've had <laughs> such, yeah, dude, it's we've awesome. had it's such so like cool. a long journey together because yeah. me and my mom moved to New York and like she found him and he's been like an amazing person to me and so when i told them like they were super open about it they were like you know what do it we believe in you like that's something i've always valued about them it's like you want to do something go do it and i they don't want to hear me say or make an excuse like if anything they were the people that pushed me to have the mindset like you're gonna do this that's awesome you know and so for me like all my mom was skeptical she was like but you just got in your dream school she was like if this is what's gonna make you happy then i'm not gonna prevent you from doing it So go forward and let's see what happens. And, you know, I guess like one of my most fulfilling moments in life is like when we got news about, uh, you know, the investment from Infinite. And like when I told my mom that I felt like, you know, if I died at this moment, I'm good. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You know what I mean? No, I know. know You know what I mean? Like, like, bro, like I just like letting her know, like we did it. Yeah. Like I remember calling John and like crying. I was like, bro, we did it. Like the the struggle's over because we were struggling, bro. Like, you know, so like we, and so like that moment for me was like, that's fulfillment. So now I like live life and I just, we, I I think a lot of us just go forward because I feel like we're in this optimal situation where like we're all very blessed. So we go forward and we know what we've done and we're super thankful and obviously super proud and then just go forward and try to do bigger things. Because for me, I've already done what I set out to do, which is make my parents proud and my family and exactly stuff, so. i think that's what all of us wanted to really accomplish with this you you want to show your parents it's a reality oh and that they can yeah. be proud of you oh, yeah. Yeah. and i know all of our parents are so proud of us now and it's like one of the most fulfilling things it is in life that you you can get the respect yeah. from your parents while we're playing video games for a living I, like i could sense that from everybody you guys yeah. just wanted to make your parents proud i know me personally like i i didn't even go to college i actually dropped out of high school because like it just wasn't for me like right. school just was not for me mm-hmm. and like i was working jobs and stuff and like i remember going waking up every day at like six o'clock in the morning to go to some job I don't construction even know I was job yeah, whatever. you know construction, yeah whatever you're doing whatever. yeah i'm just like yeah this is not my life this is no it's not what i'm doing it can't be Something yeah. more. i was back in my past i was getting in a lot of trouble as well like i just i don't know what was going on with me till like i finally settled down after a huge wake-up call and i was just like i need to put my like future and like my life towards like obey i just knew that it was like the way to go like yeah seeing with like esports going in 2016 and stuff like that i was like this is where i'm going to be at and i told my mom I was like yo let me do this for a year she gave me the year to do it and honestly i was running little on time to be honest like especially like this year turning 21 my mom, like, right before my birthday in February, which was, like, a few months ago, she was like, I don't know about this anymore. Like, she's yeah, like, I, yeah, I, I don't right. know if this is for you. You've been here for, like, what, two years now? It might be time to go, like, look into a different career and stuff like that. And, I mean, it just all played out, really. It was, yeah. like, it was yeah. a huge risk for me, I know. I mean, a lot of people don't even know, like, this man right here is my brother. Like, bro, we have matching tattoos and stuff like that right here. I didn't even know you guys had yeah, matching tattoos. Had oh, that's crazy. Like, it goes, I didn't even know that. What does yeah. that say? Love, love and passion, passion. Yeah. that's, that's really awesome i didn't know you it goes way those, deeper yeah. than like what a lot of people think like right. i really put my life my my future my everything my destiny towards like making this brand and making this business and just doing what i want to do with not only this man but like all of you guys here today that like support this brand and like just making all of this happen like, so we're yeah. gonna have to get tattoos now Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. You already know. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know Obey what? Face tat, tat, tat. <laughs> I, I want to go back to the topic of dedication because this morning when we were trying to go to our flight, we have a pretty interesting story to tell about this man right here. Oh my I th- god! I think we need to share this on the podcast. Oh, I think god. he well, should let's have, let's, it. let's have some humor for a little bit. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, no more. No more the Obey yeah. inspiration. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we're done with that. That's the last one. Let's go. Okay, so. We were we didn't sleep at all. Like when we were trying to get here, we were running late to our flight. You know, Forma calls us Uber. Uber's like twenty minutes away. Like we were stressing out. We thought we were gonna miss the flight that you guys had booked, and we were super stressed because we didn't want to miss it. And you, we would have let you guys down. I feel like if we want to miss the flight or something. So we were super stressed. And the lady that was the Uber ended up calling Formula, and she couldn't speak any English. 
So formula is like having a hard time, like trying to figure out what I'm trying to tell her the gate. Key, yeah. And our gate from our house is like, it, it's a walk. All right. It's, yeah. it's quite the walk. It's so about half a mile. Yeah. So probably. she doesn't understand what I'm saying. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to respectfully tell her like the gate key and she still doesn't get it. So we have to sprint across our neighborhood. Literally ran five like, in the morning. Yeah. Five in the By morning. The way, our flights at six. We were running at five ten. We were running oh down our God. neighborhood at five ten in the morning. And you guys were flying Full at sprint. MCO. Yeah. yeah, and we, it's pretty packed. Yeah. Keep oh, in mind, yeah. we didn't sleep, and I actually didn't eat that whole day. I didn't have one thing. I the only thing I had was cereal in the morning. That that was it. I didn't eat anything else the whole day. So I have no energy. I'm running through the neighborhood, no sleep. I'm dehydrated. I drank no water the whole day. I, so we're it's running. already starting off. I'm fine. Really bad. I'm fine when I'm in the car. I'm like, okay, all right, I'm chilling. I'm in the car. You know, whatever. And then when we get to the airport is when everything changes. Like, dude, <laughs> we, we got to the airport. We booked to the airport. <laughs> like, I was thought, I was going back to my track years in high school. I was full on sprinting. <laughs> dude, we were sprinting. Was, <laughs> dude, I mean, we were hauling because I was like, dude, we can't miss this. Like, we're screwed if we miss this. Dude, like, we're, we're full sprint. So then we get finally to security. And then we're – that's This when is we after stopped. about a two, three-minute sprint. Yeah, yeah. And like, we're, we're sitting here and we're stopped. And I, I'm fine at this point. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm just going to cool down or whatever. And then, like, it started to pick up, like, in my chest. Like, it started to actually get progressively worse while I'm, like, resting. And I'm like, what is this? You know, I tell Formy, I'm like, dude, I, I, I don't feel so good. Like, I feel like I'm about to throw up or something. Yeah. And Nick is like, okay, just take deep breaths or whatever. And I'm sitting here like, okay, I, you know, I'm just going to rest here or whatever. And then it, it still gets progressively worse. I literally feel like I'm about to pass out or I'm going to collapse. They, you were literally holding my shoulder. You were like, dude, I'm going to faint right now. Dude, I, and I was, <laughs> a, and usually I'm the type of person to be like, no, dude, I'm fine. What, whatever. I'm just going to, you know, whatever. Tough it out. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, you got to get somebody. Like, I literally feel like I'm, I'm going to like, I felt, I thought I was going to die or something. I, thought <laughs> yeah. I was going to get a heart attack yeah. like straight up. Like, so <laughs> He he gets some lady was like yo help the help this guy over here like there's a lady yeah. in front of us like it's crazy. It, it was I kind of caused somewhat of a scene and then I don't know I just got some water I sat down or whatever and I, I I felt better but it was just insane I've never felt that before I don't know if it was like some sort of health issue which I don't think it was it might have just been I had no energy dehydration or something but it was scary like I actually felt like I was gonna like straight up have a heart attack or something I don't I've never felt that before in my life like I I don't know it was just something in my chest it that's it was pain like it, it felt really bad like it that's was, crazy that you say that because like when i when i had that episode when i had my seizure like here like yeah. a year ago or whatever when i found out i had that heart murmur yeah that's how i felt yeah it was literally this horrible chest feeling yeah and then just everything closes and then you black out yeah that's I, exactly it like that's exactly yeah i don't i, I don't know what happened that's never happened to me before uh, i and usually like i i run when we go to the gym i run i sprint like I, i'm used to running but we haven't gone to the gym in like a month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing yeah, because when Formula FaceTimed me, it was like four in the morning, bro. And I was like, why is this man FaceTiming me, bro? I'm trying to go to bed. I pick up and bro, I like you guys, like, you're like, what's up, brother? You're on the plane or whatever. And I look at Kiwis. He's like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm like, I'm like, bro, is John okay? I'm like, is he good? Like, dude, his face was as white as chalk. Like, yeah. I, dude, I, I, it, I was yeah. dead, dude. I swear. Like, I've never felt that before. In I was my trying life. to say, how do you on face? I was like, bro, what's up, bro? And you're like, <laughs> Dude, I was like heavy breathing. I yeah. swear to God, for like an hour. Like it was bad. Like hey, but guess what? We're here. We're here. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Thank God. Let's hope to God that never happens we, again. We, we fed him. Don't worry. We gave him water. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's good. He's good. I I have like a, a little story to tell. Just because I actually told these guys in the car, but I kind of want to tell you guys. So it, the past like year has been like pretty nuts. Um, but so I told you that I went like car shopping the other day oh no and, uh, so there's a there's a story behind this but i want to show you guys the pics first just because there's, right. there's a good story behind it first so this is them Ooh. okay stop oh. stop the camera, bro. Oh. What? Oh. Oh, but i'll send you pics okay, okay oh my god so let's just Ooh. okay so I, I got a little story about this too though I, I'll talk to you later about this. You, all this you know stuff. I'm not gonna say this on the podcast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course I know. It's my okay, dream okay, car okay, since okay. I was six, bro. <laughs> Lamborghini. Okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> I have a little story about Brother. this. Brother. So I've been driving. <laughs> I've been driving this beaten down 2012 Hyundai Elantra that doesn't even work anymore, really, for the past like four or five years, and it's been like torture. And I've been, I'm always so stingy about money, and like e even though like doing pretty well and everything, like I just don't buy anything. Like I got the house and whatever, but it's just like. 
I, I don't really spend like money right. on like anything else. Unless like I really, 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 yeah, it's really, either for really equipment or yes. things you need. I literally, only buy stuff usually for like my yep. setup, and that's it. I still haven't even bought furniture for my house. Like that's how yeah. that's how crazy yeah, right. I am for money. But so I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a car. Like I, I want to get something that like I really enjoy. And I remember like last year we were talking about yeah. like buying like matching Lambos just like out yeah. of nowhere. It was like something we really wanted to do. Yep. So there's like a dealership like a good like hour and a half away from me, and I saw that car, and I was like. I'm going to get it. Like, I'm going to get this car. What? Bro. So I drove So I drove there by myself just to see, like, how it was. Because, I, I honestly, I I was in, like, a uh, another car that was, like, I thought was going to be perfect for me. Turned out there was, like, a uh, the Carfax on it was, like, really bad. And it was, like, one little thing that I didn't know. So I was, like, it's a good price, but I'm just going to go see it. So I went there, and I went in person. And I look like some broken down college kid with like <laughs> nothing good. Like everything I wear on is probably like fifteen dollars. I'm here in like my broken Hyundai Elantra, looking like horrible. Yeah. Like I just wanna. I just came to the to the shop like wanting to take a picture of a Lamborghini. Yeah. Like that was it. Like be in front of it, like flexing <laughs> on Insta or something right. like that. And nobody came out to me like to help me or anything yeah. like that. And then after like 10, 20 minutes of like, I found the car, but like nobody was helping me. I went inside and like people were like avoiding me. And so I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. So I went up to a desk and I kind of like talked to somebody and it was like this chick and she just like wouldn't really help me. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to leave because yeah. everybody's just being really rude. Yeah. So I just left. So the next day I had a friend that just bought like a brand new vet and I wanted to go ride it with him. So like we went out and it's like a really nice vet and I was like, I told him the story of like nobody was like helping me and I just kind of felt weird so I just dipped and I was like I want to drive the vet and go in and like wear some like nicer stuff and see if they'll if they'll like actually go in Social and like experiment so, yeah that's, that's what I'm saying. I even said like I told him I was like I, I wanted to fly Gandhi in just so Ooh. we could like do like a social experiment yeah because it would be really fun but like uh i got like i got like the shoes on and i got like all dressed up and everything and i got there in the vet and not one but two guys came up to me i can't instantly it, instantly came wow. up to me and started talking big thing in the story or like just kind of pushing through the story really fast is like i got in it and like i just had like this euphoric moment of like i can't believe i'm doing this right yeah. now of like That's i can't believe crazy. this is happening and I, it was really cool, like actually being in the car and everything. But this is like a really, I told them again, like this is like a really weird phobia. But I have like a weird phobia of like being insanely popular, like literally everybody knowing me. Yeah. And like, I, I really don't want to be like at a status of like, like ninja or like right. people like that. Cause I feel like if I got like seen like all the time, I wouldn't have like kind of like a real life because like I can go out and I can get recognized like every now and then. And yeah. I don't really mind that. But when I, when I kind of get like scared of like showing my face and like, I have to say hi to absolutely yeah. everybody and like everybody's eyes are looking on me. I don't want that. Like that kind of like freaks me Completely out. Completely agree. And I felt like when I had gotten that car and we like drove around, I felt like that. And I honestly hated that. Yeah. It was so like, Every car, every person, everywhere you went, you. everybody's staring directly yep. in your eyes, like freaking out about it. And to be honest, I feel like Lamborghinis are kind of overrated. Not really Dang. that lot. Not really that big. <laughs> not really a lot of leg space. Feels not bad. really that a lot of leg space. You can't put your boys inside either because uh, wow. I don't need my boys. But they're it's, <laughs> wow. it's a pretty cool car. Those, yeah. It's a really cool car. But yeah, no. it, it was a really it was a really fun experience. I don't. I don't think I'm going to get it anymore. I yeah. think what I'm going to do is I'm wow. probably going to cut the price in half and then I'm going to get like a new charger or something. That's like crazy. That. That's dope. But, but that's crazy. Yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's a learning experience though. It like, really is, man. People it ego puts things you. Into perspective. Oh, all right, dude. Yeah. Just, just because like I put some like nice shoes and like, nice shirt. The grass is always nice greener car. on the other side. Yeah. I was really looking forward to being in the passenger seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have I I came. I we can go and drive it together. We'll drive it together. We'll get our suits on. Look nice and fancy. Hit me in the trunk, please. But yeah, I just, I just thought it was like pretty. Crazy. That's pretty funny though. Yeah. yeah, I like that story. But um, anybody else have anything they want to talk about? I think that's it, right? Uh, are we that's done it. with we the just, obey? We talked about part. a lot of really yeah. good yeah, we stuff. Had some, yeah. We had some hard time. Gave some inspirational yeah. moments. Some inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Some good information on the backstory of what yeah. happened between some good everybody. Comedy. I think overall it was like a really good episode to start off with. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I guess the next one's will be to more the like past. topic driven. So I guess what we want to know is like, who would you want to see on here? Because obviously the guys aren't always going to be here. Right. Um, and also, what do you want to hear us talk about? Because here it was just more like an intro, free flowing conversation. Um, so I guess we're looking for a little bit of direction on what you guys would like to see and what make happen. 
So if there's anything else, I would thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, so bad. you shall listen. Let's get it. Podcast. You shall oh listen. <laughs> <Till later. laughs> <No. laughs> All right, guys. All right. Let's That's do it. Fun. That's a wrap. That was...